everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Salem by Night. I am the Rabno Sarkhan. I'll be your storyteller this evening. My name is Will. And with the city of Salem, Oregon, we have seen in the recent episodes a focus from the Anarch's perspective. We've seen what's happened uh, through the eyes of one Erickson Wood, of one Andreas Barker, and one Melvin Wright. And although events have led us to lose track of the tower's side of things tonight that changes tonight we get to see a new coterie birthed uh brought together and we open with a completely new trio of faces hello everyone good to Hi. see you oh darling oh we open at the primogen council there is a ballroom that has been put aside for the group uh, in the Ilawe Country Club on the south end of Salem proper. Uh, gathered are the Ventru Prince, Thomas Reginald Hyde, who is dressed in his very elegant kind of uh, linen suit. Uh, it is a dark yellow he's got a white undershirt underneath he's got a beautiful uh silk kind of sunflower themed tie uh the bruja primogen is seated next to him she is just this short fiery ball of energy uh her foot is bouncing up and down uh she's restless trying to figure out uh uh, a comfortable way to sit. Uh, she's sitting to his right. To his left is the Nosferatu Primogen. Uh, he is a collection of braided skin. Uh, he is rough around the edges, to say the least. He's definitely a poster child for the Nosferatu clan as a whole. Uh, Seated to his left is a gentleman who is clean cut, prim and proper, hair greased back, uh, not an inch of his SS uniform out of place. Uh, if he could be standing, he would be, but he looks like he is just rigid sitting in his seat. Um, to the Bruja Primogen's right is another female. Uh, this one is blonde, blue-eyed, just uh, a bombshell of class. Uh, her dress is beautiful. Uh, it has just the right touch of sequins that catch the light into an almost uh, sword-like pattern. Uh, and the jacket that she's wearing has had the sleeves rolled up. Uh, and it also has a little bit of a motif of a scepter, so you know what clan she is if you're really paying attention. Uh, off to the sides, a little bit away from everyone, um, there's two seats that two gentlemen inhabit. One is kind of dressed in a typical professor's outfit. He's got the rolled up sleeves, the top button vest undone, uh, his high has been pulled down slightly so it's not up against his neck uh slacks and shoes um glasses in his vest pocket next to him is another uh southern looking gentleman he's got the same kind of linen suit on though his is uh of blue color blue persuasion uh, one side at a table by himself is a gentleman who just looks haggard, uh, dirty, like he's literally pulled himself out of the earth five minutes before you guys arrived. There's uh, a gentleman that is seated on a seat, but not with the group. Uh, he is not bad looking, but there is something that makes him feel ugly. Um, He's got a widow's peak of a black hair that dominates his head. The, his eyebrows are bushy. 
He's got a bit of a beard that has that was trying to come in before his embrace. Uh, and standing next to the three of you is a gentleman who all of you have been introduced to, who is Harvey Green, the Camarilla Sheriff of the city. Uh, he has no jacket. He has a shirt on, a little kind of plaid shirt, uh, sleeves rolled up. Uh, the two lengths of his tie are on either side of his neck. Uh, it has been undone a long time ago. There's jeans and boots. Uh, and going down the line, I'd like each of you to introduce yourselves, introduce your characters, and let us get a bit of who they are. And we'll start with Ivory. Do you just want characters? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ivory Larson is a Toreador, and um, she is wearing a black dress with uh, a lace up and has ice blue eyes and blonde hair, um, which, but she also has a veil covering the right side of her face. Um, but what you can see is very classically beautiful. Okay. Uh, Carl. All right, so Carl is a uh, clan Um He is kind of your typical, nerdy lab geek um a little bit more because he's more of an engineer than a pure science like a pure lab rat but you know he he basically is kind of like the other guy that was described um you know he's in a in a uh, like a lazy kind of suit you know a little bit archaic uh for the 80s but you know classic um and a loose tie you know but he's got a lab coat on because he can't go anywhere without his lab coat of course um and uh yeah he's got glasses on even though he doesn't need them anymore kind of forced to have it um he's got dark black hair green eyes uh like kind of a longer face than mine you know but more like hawkish he has a very skinny kind of face um yeah okay. that's kind of where he's at. and uh kathleen what makes you so special You might be muted under there. Hello, there my name's Kathy. It's classically beautiful. I'm the blonde hair, sophisticated type, and I like to make a little bit of a noise here and there, but I don't expect you all to hear me in the sense that you want to. Uh, I'm a big advocate for women's rights as well as animals and anything that needs a little help. And I'm very looking forward to uh, joining this lovely little transgressions. And everything you see is what you get. Standing next to Kathy is a woman that I know for a fact Ivory has met. Carl might not have met her as of yet. Uh, but you have heard of her. Her name is Tulip. She is one of the Nosferatus in the city. She is also one of the harpies that the Primogen uses. Um, she is also wigged in a kind of bubbly, blonde, uh, just below the shoulder kind of length of a bob. Um, she is dressed casually, uh, smart shirt, pants, uh, and a little bit of a jacket because it is the end of... Uh, October, when we come up across this group, just the beginning of November. Um, and so Oregon has gotten a little cold. Tulip is uh, presenting Kathy to the Primogen Council because this is her childer. Uh, and so the Primogen have gathered Ivory and uh, Carl together um as a favor to tulip who has been a fantastic uh, not servant but aid to the camarilla in the city and a stand up uh, person they have asked uh 
Wesley Ian Garda, the Toreador Primogen, has asked uh, Ivory to come in uh, to keep an eye on Kathy. And Richard Stephen Thompson, the Tremere Primogen, has asked Carl to come in and keep an eye on Kathy as well, forming this coterie out of a necessity to kind of not babysit, but make sure that um, Kathy is 100% ready to integrate herself into kindred and kind society. Uh, however, the sheriff has also uh, been given a file folder that he is passing on to your group. Uh, and he stands there for a moment reading off a cue card, literally, that has been given to him. Uh, You've all been brought together in front of this group um, to not only keep an eye on this new Nosferatu in the city, but to make sure that certain interests are kept in line with the Camarilla. Uh, that being said, the Prince and the Primogen would like your group to focus uh, on the historic downtown of Salem. Uh, it seems that a group that is trying to push into the city has uh, overstepped their boundaries, and we'd like to know who's at the bottom, who's the behind it entirely. Um, I don't know how long you've been here, uh, but at the beginning of the year, the Orpheus Theater was bought out by a group from California. And... Uh, Unfortunately, what this has brought into the city is a group that call themselves the Kuei Jin. We'd like you to kind of find out what they're up to, why they're here, and because of your Nosferatu uh, Coterie member, you might get to actually pull some of the other Nosferatu into the city into helping you, since they've gone quiet as of late after Mickey's death. And you do see that there is a bit of whispering. A couple of the primogen are kind of leaning into each other. Um, the only one that is sitting by himself and is kind of not being leaned into is the Malkavian primogen. But he's also still believes that uh, Adolf Hitler is correct. So a lot of people give him a wide berth. Sheriff holds out the file folder for any of you to take. Sure. Go ahead and take it. Yeah. yeah. I give uh, Ivory a smirk and I say, don't worry, babysitter. I got this covered. <laughs> Um, Ivory is going to turn on her heightened senses and see if she can hear what some of the primogen are saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is not an Elysium, so you are allowed to use your powers. Uh, go ahead and make a wits and awareness roll. And I get to add my Ostex to that, correct? Yeah. Because it's two more dice. That's nice. Yep. So. Mm. Two successes. Okay. The. Bruja Primogen is talking to the Ventru Primogen uh, about how she had a coterie already looking into it. Uh, it's not her fault that they haven't checked in with her. Uh, she's blaming a lot of the lack of communication on... Uh, the name Grant Reynolds. Um, uh, and she calls him Baron Reynolds. She calls him, uh, and then corrects herself, Grant Reynolds. 
Um, after the Ventrue Primogen kind of gives her a look, like we're not supposed to acknowledge his title. Uh, on the other side, the Tremere Primogen has uh, leaned into the Toreador Primogen and just kind of encouraged him uh, to not be worried uh, that he is vouching for Carl personally. That's what you get with two successes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. She does not show any kind of emotion or anything while listening to this. Okay. And she um, turns to Kathleen and says, "Oh, don't worry. I'm sure you'll you'll be great." The sheriff looks at the three of you. All right, if there's nothing else, the uh, three of you can fuck off. Will do. Let's go. Let's go look for this uh, disturbance. Who drove here and who came by other means? Kathleen <sighs> most likely would have walked. Yeah. I have a driver. Okay. Yeah, I would have driven probably. Okay. So the valet sees you coming out. One of them immediately rushes out to bring your car around. Your driver, uh, Ivory, sees you and starts to make his way around the parking lot to come pick you up. So you have a couple of minutes to discuss things amongst yourselves. I lean against the wall and I open the folder to try and read what the notes say. Yeah, I was going to ask. Same. Okay. The file folder has um, the history of the Orpheus Theater, uh, how it used to belong to um, Wesley Ian Garter, and another, uh, another owner whose name has been redacted. Um, and it talks about how it was uh, unceremoniously bought out by a group uh, that comes from California. Um, as soon as I get their names, I will give it to you. While you're getting their names, can mm -hmm. I hold it up? I'm going to hold it up to the light to see if maybe the light filtering through would be able to see through the redaction. Oh. Look at you being. Give me a, a, a wits and awareness roll. Wits and a what? Wits and awareness. Yes. Two and wits is three, so five. Five dice. And six or higher is what you're looking for. Every six or higher is a success. Got a zero, a nine, a seven, a one, and a three. Yep. So, I'll sing it yeah, the you can't Sorry. make out the whole name, but there is a, a G you're pretty sure of, or a Q in the first letter, uh, and then the other capitalized letter that you can make out is definitely a B. Uh, the group that took over the theater is called the Zhao Long Group, uh, and they have a spokesperson named Li Main Bao Zhu. I pass on the folder to Carl, and I say, here you go, old man. Maybe this might more, be more beneficial for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll go ahead and scroll through it. Um... Do I know anything about the, the what do you call them, the Quajin? The Quajin. Quajin. Um, I mean, you do have a cult. Um, so I'll let you roll for that. We're doing intelligence? Uh, intelligence is, yeah. Yeah, that's your intelligence and, and a cult. 
Mm -hmm. uh, your specialty will not count for this. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, it's only, it's only going to be seven dice. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, six and higher. All right, so one, two, three. So, okay, so three, um, <clears throat> three successes, one was a zero, so a ten. Okay. I know it was two, right, to get critical? Yeah, you need you need two tens to get a critical. Okay, so three successes. Three successes. The Quay Gene are what vampires consider uh, a disgrace. They they call themselves Oriental vampires, like Chinese, Japanese, mythological vampires, but they have they don't share the same bloodthirst. Um, there's a esoteric discussion that they use yin and yang energy for their feeding. Uh, but it's never been observed. Okay. And are they considered... Uh, they're not considered a clan? Or at, least, at least I've never heard of them, right? No, no, they're not a clan. They're not clan status. They're something outside of Amarilla, Anarch, uh, Sabbat, all of that. Okay. Yeah. The only, they known, the only thing that you have is that they, they do originate somewhere in the Far East. Okay. And it just, are they by nature hostile towards the Camarilla, or do we know? They're hostile towards everyone that's not them. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Great. The, you can tell that there's definitely whoever wrote the dossier on the Xiaolong group um, is not an eloquent person. Because uh, all it says, there's a picture of Li Min Baozhu, and it just has a little post it note uh, on the picture that says, as nice as a bag of dicks. Okay. Take that what you will. All right. Point to the note and I say, I think we should start here. That's my opinion. Yeah, start with uh, Laming. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know what he might know. He wouldn't be in this folder for no reason. I would agree. About you, Ivory. Look at the strong, silent type. You got any words of wisdom? <laughs> well, I didn't actually catch the name of who you were talking about. Which one, the group or the the person? The, okay, so you want to start at the group. Well, she was. I think um, Kathy was talking about going to Lei Ming. Uh, Bu Bijou, I was you. Bajou? Sorry, okay. I we want to go to Lei Ming Bad Juju. Might be some bad juju. Um, uh, well, do you share that information, Carl? Yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah, like according to. Mm. Uh, my research into just kind of general vampire society on a, on a whole, this is a group kind of outside of, it's considered even outside of kindred, uh, it seems, um, as they don't need to feed uh, on blood per se, or at least that's what they're claiming, or, and that's what um, is kind of being backed up. They feed on some level of yin-yang energy, but no one's ever seen it, or at least not documented. Um, so they're kind of like a strange offshoot of us or maybe something completely outside, but very similar. It's hmm. unknown. Interesting. Oh, um, so I don't have a lot of, you know, background on them, but you know, they, they have popped up in the, in the histories and in my research more than once as it were. That's well, like my kind of party. Yeah. <laughs> I can pretty much charm anybody. So. Well, you <laughs> Um, let's, uh, I guess, yeah, let's head down there and see what's up there. Our goal was to investigate what's happening in the theater. Uh, well, 
Uh, they want you to find out what's um, what's behind the current kind of push to expand because they they came in in the middle of the year. They took over the theater, and from what the dossier tells you, they've kind of been quiet. You know, sticking to the theater, revamping it from what it was before, which was Egyptian themed, to what it is now, which is full on Chinese dragons, very bamboo forest kind of pandas on the walls like they've they've leaned into their heritage um to their stereotypes at least uh but now it's like they're pushing out they're starting they've just recently acquired a building uh, an office building outside of the historic downtown and they're they're in negotiations to buy one of the bars on the strip So like trying to find out what's their end goal yeah essentially mm-hmm. and you said uh i believe um i'm brain dead on the nosferatu primogen's name uh tulip right tulip is not the primogen she's the the harpy right okay yeah, tulip is also but... kathy's sire okay yeah sorry yeah uh, um but she had said would i lost they had lost nosferatu contact or i was like about the... to say well would i any of my contacts might have heard anything like any tidbits or anything that I could be aware of? Um, contacts, as far as the background is concerned, is human contacts. Uh, so, so I was wondering, like people around the neighborhood maybe have seen something like strange. The um, you'd have to go into historic downtown to try and link up with them, unless you have phone numbers. Okay. You want to make phone calls, uh, but it's at this point that Carl's car is brought around and Ivory's driver pulls up. Do we want to go separately or do we want to go together? Multiple options. So let's go and meet at, um, uh, I don't know the downtown, uh, so pick a bar. Um, uh, the, what's Al- a, what's a the Albatross is a popular spot on the Strip. Uh, it is owned by a thin blood named Marcus Bradley. Okay, so let's go there. Let's meet there, and then we can park the cars and at least have more than one option of, you know, potentially getting away should something happen. Uh, since we're going into unknown, an unknown threat, as it were. I walk up to Carl's car. I get on the other side, and I just sit in the passenger seat and close the door. Go then. <laughs> I guess I'll meet you there. All right. All right we'll meet you there. All right. Thanks, so Ivory. I think uh, the, the car is a little messy, uh, you know, not like food wrappers or anything, but just kind of notes and, and stuff running oh. around. Push some notes aside. It's okay, sweetheart. Everyone has their friends. Thank you. There's a, All right. There must be, what, like physics books and aeronautical books? <gasps> yeah, stuff like is that. there actual physical books? Because then she'll pick some up and she'll start, like, leafing through them. Yeah, yeah, totally. And like just having like a very nerdy conversation about the different types of physics she studied. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, we would be sitting there. We'll have a conversation the whole way for sure. Okay. Uh, into aeronautics and physics. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Love. Uh, but you get to you get to the albatross. Um, it is uh, a Saturday night, so it's kind of it's kind of bumping already. There's a couple of the college kids sitting outside smoking. Uh, even for this time period, uh, Marcus is very forward thinking. He doesn't allow smoking inside of his bar. Um, but as you pull up and find a spot, uh, it's not too difficult. Um, there's a light flurry of snow that starts, but it, as soon as it hits the ground, it's already evaporated. It's not sticking. Okay. But you can see some of the kids uh, are already like looking up, looking at their watches, and contemplating doing that. That contemplative kind of like, should I stay or could I have another drink, or is this enough reason to call it a night? Um, what time is it in the game? It's just after eleven. Okay. Um, most of Oregon closes around one. Good to know. So, All right. Uh, only the real, like, world of darkness places stay open beyond one. 
Uh, the mm -hmm. albatross tends to close around three, so it is a, an after hours spot. Uh, the vagabond is also an after hours spot, but that's because it's owned by the Tremere Primogen. Um, but that's not on the strip, that's further north, eh, almost on the border of, uh, of Kaiser, which is one of the other districts. Uh, but as sorry, you... Tremere Primogen's name again? The Tremere Primogen is uh, Richard Stephen Thompson. Yeah, he comes to Salem by way of Chicago and before that by way of London. Uh, an esteemed traveler. And where is uh, is he Pyramid or uh, Karna? He is neither. Neither. Oh. Interesting. Like kind of a, an independent, like screw off everybody. He uh he earned his primogen spot because he's not. He hasn't badmouthed the 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 pyramid, but he also kind of saw what happened in Venice and was like, hey. I'm not part of that crew, uh, and I'm also not part of this crazy crew. Uh, so if I could just be allowed to exist, that'd be nice. Um, when you said Venice, do you mean Vienna or Vienna. Just something else? Yeah, Vienna, sorry. All right, just make sure. They're, they start with Vs. Yeah, you know, same thing. What, they're like, what, 10, 10 blocks away from each other? It's all, it's, it's European, whatever. Yeah. There's water. Uh, so on the way, yeah. somehow Ivory has changed clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, a little more lower class pants, with a leather it. jacket. I like it. Uh, Fitting in. Yeah, you gotta have out multiple location uh, as you should. Yeah. Uh, you you guys come into the bar. Uh, there is a live band. Um, uh, it's called uh, Edgar Allan Poe's Remorse. <laughs> uh, they're not great but they're not terrible they're right now uh, butchering some CCR covering some CCR um, and you can see Marcus at the end of the bar just kind of sitting there with uh, a shot of what looks like whiskey I walk up to Marcus and I tap the whiskey and I'm like I'll have what you're having he he looks at you for a moment uh, and remembers who you are. He's like, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I hope you're not going to actually like, drink it and vomit it all over my bar like you did last time. And he holds his hand up and the bartender nods. <laughs> That's so you... funny, Marcus. I, I, these stories you're coming towards, they're hilarious, darling. I'll take one. And Do they serve anything else here? Darker. Uh, you could partake of some of his alchemical concoctions. Sounds like your kind of drink, Ivory. <laughs> Thanks for luck. What is um? What are you? <clears throat> what do we mean by alchemical? Like, what do they got? It. It isn't vitae, but it it tastes of vitae. So, so like a like a diet vitae, like a substitute. It is a substitute vitae. As long as you're, uh, if you're drinking it, it can remove one level of hunger. Uh, without the blood bond, uh, but it will not bring you below hunger one. I did want to ask: our, what are we at on hunger? Uh, you all started one. Okay. Read my mind. Um, yeah. And is I'm trying to remember what I read on hunger. Yeah. The only way to, to drop to hunger zero is kill. to well, to yeah to kill. Okay. To kill. Sure. Got it. Drain a human completely. Normally I wouldn't have a problem with that, but that's not the game we're playing. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a bot for life. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, so all right. says what? Whip, whip. Huh? Ivory will order a concoction. One of the alchemical drinks? Yes, please. Okay. I will. Okay. I will also. 
Sure. Just stick with the whiskey. And uh, you see him get up and go behind the bar to actually make the alchemical drinks. Um, and you see him pull out what looks to be... Um, and Carl recognizes them almost immediately when he pulls them out. But there's a little jar of blood beads. Yeah. And each drink he dumps into each one of the mixing cups, he dumps one of the blood beads into it. Uh, and you see him kind of uh, crushing it, almost like a mortar and pestle. Um, okay. Makes a drink almost like a mojito. Like he's making a mojito for you. Okay. Definitely to keep paying him a lot of attention because it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And you see that uh, the, the pint glass that he puts on top of it to shake the drink looks like it has markings like uh, a typical bartender's cup where it's like this is as many ounces as whatever. Um, but when he stops and hits the side to pop it off, you notice that they're not ounce measurements. They're actually alchemical symbols, like the symbol for Mercury, the symbol for Saturn. Uh, he's got them all up and down the glass. And the second that he pops the pint glass off, you notice that two of the symbols glow on the opposite sides of the glass. And as he pours the as he strains the mixture into what is a Tom Collins glass, uh, there's a little swirl of what looks to be just pearlescent. And he slides the cup to ivory, and then he gets to work on the second cup. And then he, once he finishes, the same thing. It's like a little pearlescent swirl comes up, uh, and he just slides it in front of Carl. All right, you let me know Thank what you, you think you of that. Me. Yeah, I will. I will. I um, will. It looks beautiful. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'd have it. I'll put an umbrella in there for you if uh, if it was a little warmer outside. But I don't want to be a dick. So I'll go ahead and and take a swig. And as I'm doing, uh, I want to try taste for blood. See what's in it, if I can. Ooh, being a Tremere already. <laughs> See. So. Resolve in blood sorcery, right? Yep. And let me go to taste for blood. Oh, it's a free power. Look at you. Right. Yeah. I don't want to rouse just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of stuff. yeah. Remember to replace one of your regular dice with one of your blood dice, one of your right. hunger dice. Can do. Oh. Uh, yeah, let me do a different one, just so I know. For now. Yeah. Until I remember what the hell those symbols mean. Um, all right. So I got if the difficulty is still six, right? All yep, difficulty. Always. Yeah. Oh, the, no, right here. So standard just, standard like, difficulty is always gonna be six or higher, and whenever I, I refer to a difficulty, it's the number of successes that you need to score. Okay. So when it says difficulty three and, and taste for blood, is that the the number the of successes six? you need? Successes I need. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, regardless, I got uh, five successes. Oh. No, four successes. Four successes. Okay. And my hunger die I rolled a one. Does that matter? Only if you don't have any successes. Oh no, that's what I thought. Just make yeah, it. No, you're fine. All right. Uh. So yeah. So you identify that there is more than one supernatural blood in this. Mm. Uh, there's definitely vampiric blood, but there's something else. Uh, it feels like this isn't completely vampiric in nature, so it almost feels like it might be his blood that he's using, since he technically is and isn't kindred, okay. uh, being a, a thin blood. But at the same time, it's like you don't, you don't feel, especially given the, the fact that you're a Tremere uh, and you've lost the ability to bond, bond people, but you still can be bonded. This, you don't feel the bond. Okay. 
Yeah, I figured it'd be bad taste if it was if he was gonna already try to blood bond us. That would be <laughs> yeah, it was very long. Yeah. Um, so I I link in kind of closer to the to the to Marcus. You said right. Yep. And uh, I go, I I sense us, but also a kicker. Very nice. Uh, I do what I can with what I've been given, you know. So um, spicy. You know, uh, you put a lot of yourself into the mixes that you create as a bartender. I can imagine. I'm sure you do. Uh, and I don't mean to pry into a into a fellow mixer uh, craft, but would you mind if I could see the the was you the bar shaker thing? Sorry, I'm oh my, shaker. my mixing glass. Mixing glass. I mean, I shouldn't because you're Tremere, but <laughs> at the same time, I kind of want to see if you can name all of the symbols. And he does put the glass in front of you. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So first thing we'll try on it is aspects uh, since the unseen. Oh. Uh, there is nothing hidden. Okay. Yeah. Is there any kind of uh, special, like supernatural, like uh, rituals or anything on it? Like uh, not like, not like at all. Tree? They they it just literally looks like there are alchemical symbols like straight out of one of the first books that you took with you when you left Germany. Okay. All right. Then. Well, let's go ahead and, and play, uh, identify that symbol. Okay. It's going to be a intelligence and academics trail role. Okay. Um, do you have a specialty that could help you? Uh, and academics, I have research. Yeah. You know what? I'll let it fly. Okay. And so, that does what? Reroll tens? No. Uh, Specialties give you one extra dice. One extra dice. Yep. So, all right, academics is yeah. three. So, you're yes. going to be rolling eight dice, uh, seven regular, one hunger. And remember that you can always take a point of superficial willpower damage to reroll up to three non hunger dice. Okay. All right. So, one, two, three. All right. So, I got three successes. Okay. No, uh, no failures. I mean, no, no botches, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I oh, guess... Right, so it doesn't matter except if you don't get any successes, right? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Still... yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. It's fine. Uh, like I said, you you recognize the two planetary symbols. Um, you also recognize uh, the symbol for air, the symbol for Earth, uh, the symbol for phosphorus. Or vinegar, or uh, iron, quicksilver, and the last one is sulfur. So he said Mercury and Jupiter, right? Yep. All right, go ahead and list them off uh, in alphabetical order, if you would. Um... <laughs> And he just kind of nods. Oh, I'll be damned. Mr. Thompson was right about you. You are good. Thank you. I appreciate it. But much less good than your drink, sir. Thank you. I will say Don't that uh, I'd recommend you stay to one per night if I were you. Kind of winks. I'll do. So, Market, Madam. we've been hearing in some rumblings on the strip that someone's trying to nose in. You know anything about that? Uh, if you're talking about the the group over at the Orpheus, uh, I've uh, I've been having to order out, as it were, more more recently. Yeah. Can you tell us anything about the group that's trying to do all this? Oh, uh, I I believe that. The only one here that might not know how we do things is our young little miss over here, and he points to Kathy. She's in the midst of like taking a nice long shot and be like, "Excuse me, I help you." Uh, well, I'm glad that you got your dice, Kathy, because you're gonna need them. 
Okay. Right. <laughs> Give me a stamina and resolve roll. That's not fair. You know that's my lowest stat. <laughs> you got you got five Don't dice. <laughs> you got five dice. You don't have the eat food merit. So. All right, it's two. Resolve is three. So. Make sure that you roll one separately to, to show your hunger dice. So that's my two one. Mm -hmm. That's included in the five, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's five, but four regular, one hunger. That's all. Uh, six to pass. Mm hmm. Yeah, one, two, three, four sevens, and one three. Okay. Um, uh, you take down the whiskey, and your stomach immediately starts to fight it being there. Um. Uh, Luckily, you rolled high enough that you can see yourself to the bathroom or outside, whichever you'd like, to expel it out of your body. But I smile the whole time. Like, I'm like, mm, Marcus, always great. Uh, mm. I'm going to go use the ladies' room. You remember Done. where it is, sure. I wave. Yeah. And you make your way through the crowd to the bathroom. Uh, somebody's about to go in as you're running over. Uh, but they immediately just let you pass the second they see you get up. Uh, but Marcus, after Kathy runs off, he turns back to Ivory and Carl. Uh, what am I being given in exchange for my information? Oh, can't you just do it out of the goodness of your heart? Oh. And she will do a persuasion roll. <laughs> Okay. Which Sorry, she gets to use presence with <laughs> for charisma and everything. Yeah. And charisma You're not persuasion. Like that amount. Uh, let's see. So that's seven. Ooh. That's 10 dice. Oof. Seven successes. Seven successes. Uh, he looks at you. He smiles. Uh, and with the critical that I rolled, he's like, best free thing I can give you is that they are Quay Jean from uh, California who have made their way over here because of the events that happened uh, a couple years back with the whole Anarch Revolt. They're diversifying their portfolio, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Okay. What is, uh, in uh, this timeline, what is the Anarch Revolt are we talking about? No, obviously not talking about the Convention of Thorns. No, no, no. In 1940-something, there was a big revolt that uh, toppled the tower in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. The, the so, barony. Yeah, okay. so... It became the, the baronies. It became the, it is now, the, the big word is that California is now the, uh, the home of the Anarch Free States. And that's where, that's where all the dominoes are toppling from. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure we're all good. Got it. All right. Um, so I go, uh, if you know more, I'd be willing to commit a service if you have a need. Ooh. A tremendous service. That's fancy. Uh, you know what? Yeah, there's uh, information was brought to me recently by uh, a couple of fellas that uh, I deal with on the regular. Um, one of them's a bruja called uh, Erickson Wood, Eric the Red, they call him. Apparently, some uh, some little demon or something got loose out in uh, out in West Salem by the Willamette River. 
somewhere over there. Um, if you can bring me proof of, of some demon out, definitely uh, spill the beans on the rest of the information that I know. You said, where was it? The West Salem? West Salem, just across the river, he said. It was uh, a day's in or some kind of motel just up up north by the river, almost on the way to Salem Town. Do you know where um, uh, Eric the Red is hanging out currently? Uh, he is currently Riverside. Um, he is trying to rebuild a bar um, called The Last Call. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, we will. I will attempt to get you proof. All right. Now, be aware. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the city, uh, but West Salem belongs to Grant Reynolds. So keep your keep your head on the swivel while you're across the river. And I know you told me because I I, remember, I recognize the name Grant Reynolds. was who again? Uh, Grant Reynolds is a ex Sabbat Templar who has become the Baron of West Salem. So he's a friendly guy. Oh, okay. Sorry, out of character. I know. So, but he is the Baron, so that's well known, right? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he yeah. claimed barony about two months ago in game. Uh, okay. All right. Now, does is it known that uh, he's Exabot or? Yeah, yeah, he is proud of the fact that he was a Sabbat member and a Sabbat Templar. Okay. Um, and is it um, how to put it? The has is he known, or is his domain known for less masquerade type places? Like, are they openly feeding kind of stuff? They're not openly feeding, uh, but he he only has given out three domains to. Uh, members of his barony okay. um so each one has its own rules interesting do we have any idea what those rules are or what they what they expect of us if we come if we cross the line kind of thing cross into their domain no nobody has stuck it out in west salem long enough to okay so try to basically go in and out as fast as possible kind of thing mm. Well, or at least that's what they've done so far. Got it. All right. All right. Uh, from what I'm reading here, if I could have Kathy roll a single dice for her rouse check. Got a six. Okay. So... Then I got a zero for the one other die, but I'm asking about the other one. I'm not too sure how that rule works. No, no. Uh, I thought that you were just trying to sneak by naturally. I did not know that you were that you were already being uh, being an Osferatu uh, and using an obfuscate. So uh, you come out of the bathroom. Uh, nobody is looking at you. You find a dark corner and you just pull the shadows into you. Uh, and you can feel yourself just being avoided by people. Nobody's looking your direction. Nobody sees you. And you do make your way to the back. Um, and in his office, uh, you see that there's just a desk, a couple of papers with uh, different orders. Um, there's a big briefcase that has a bunch of new artwork um it looks like for a company called grim brothers uh but it, they're all all of the artwork has to do with like beers and such uh and otherwise there's just a couple of shelves with extra liquor bottles it looks like a storage unit for his bar uh that doubles the as desk? an office uh, writing utensils, notepads, uh, a folder, uh, different folders for the different companies that he does business with. Um, 
and a couple of pictures of him with different either students or professors over at Willamette University. Okay. I'm going to exit out before I get caught. Go. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make my way back to the bar. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you get back at the end of this conversation about uh, crossing over into West Salem and uh, learning about Grant Reynolds and the barony that he has over there. He just kind of reminds you, uh, if you get stuck on that side of the river, just be aware that you could try to push yourselves up north to Salem Town. Um, Otis King and his coterie have kind of established a second, a secondary kind of uh, Camarilla uh, safe haven over there. It's kind of neutral territory. Everyone's allowed to be there. Um, His bar, I believe, is called the, the Red Eye Lounge. But everything inside the bar and everything out, I want to say for 300 yards is safe territory. At least, at least neutral territory. Well, I guess Thank we're going to take on it. Yeah, be careful with uh with Otis and his coterie. Uh, there's only four of them, but they've been together since the beckoning, and uh, they watch each other's backs like hawks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Warning. Yeah. Otis, Manny, Dimitri, they're they're pretty uh, they're pretty easy to get along with. John Colson is the one that's the real snake in the grass. If you gotta deal with him, be aware. You should be fine though, he's Tremere like you. Uh, Colton? John okay. Colton. Good to know. Oh. Um, but you said he doesn't have a good reputation, kinda sneaky? doesn't have a good reputation with the Camarilla on this side of the river. Okay. Uh, there's no secret that Otis and Hyde have it out for each other. Okay. Makes sense. So. Well, then I guess we better get going now, shouldn't we, clan? I think we should. I suppose. I say Thank we all so ride much. together this time. What do you think? Yeah, I, I would agree. I always wanted to ride in a limo, right, Ivory? Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's not a limo. <laughs> it, it's a, a black sedan. Oh, but I'm better. So I think. Do we want to is, uh, go uh, over there with that, or would we rather go a little more incognito? So not with the driver, you mean? Not with the fancy try. car. Yeah, that's a fancy car. Yeah, mine's just a normal car if you want to go in mine. That's fine. Do you mind? No. You won't be able to stop for a wardrobe, though. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I think this will be fine. Perfect. Okay. And anyway, I can just uh, thank Marcus for his, his hospitality and, and, and his story. Yeah, anyone, anyone's welcome here at, uh, at the Albatross. Uh, we will be back shortly, hopefully. Sure. Or at least with uh, the proof. May not be tonight, but soon. Yeah. Where, where am I going to go? Fair. Um, yeah, you drive across the bridge, uh, across the Willamette so, River. So as we're getting to the car, hmm? I'll say to them, so I couldn't find anything in the office, but I did mention, see, that uh, he had some new business with some Grim Brothers, I believe he was called. I, I like, look at my hand. Grim Brothers and Beers. That's all I can find. Okay. Interesting. Proceed to step okay. into his car. So, demons. Yeah. I think that's your forte. What can you tell us? I don't know. Storyteller, what can we tell her? 
do we know? Let's have you roll an intelligence and a cult. Okay. Um, I doubt Ivory has dealt with demons, so. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I I mean <laughs> men can be considered demons. Well. <laughs> but I don't know. It's not men they say in hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Just mm. saying. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh anyway, uh five successes. Okay. Um there's a lot of lore in the occult, especially during the Middle Ages, about demons, summoning demons, um using blood to control demons. Um a whole book of what might be demonic actual names so you can control said demons. Um you have a basic rudimentary like Alistair Crowley level of information. But you also with five successes you can consider demon in its other sense where it might just be a fallen angel. Okay. Somebody that has you know spit on their duties and the word of God uh, could be considered a demon. Jinn are considered demons. Uh, but there's a lot of okay. open interpretation to the word demon. True. Oh, that gives you a lot of outs, though, at the same time, because Marcus might not know what he's looking for. Right. So proof of a demon could be a bunch of different things. Yeah. I see. So, what we're looking for. If I'm not reading this wrong, none of us are exactly fighters. Oh, you think of us as the thinking party. (laughs) So, Uh, for for combat, yeah, I'm more of a distance. I put a bullet in them, kind of fighting. I fight them with my good looks. Oh, problem. we have that in common. <laughs> Very dangerous. Problem. Well, worst case scenario, if it's a male, I can promise you will handle it efficiently. That's true. I would not doubt you. I do think we should head over to this coltery and speak to these people. The uh, the Otis guy and his crew, or Eric the Red and his crew? I think the Otis guy we should stop first, but that's just my opinion. It's up to you two. Well, I believe they're closer. Because we said Eric the Red was at a like at a Days Inn, well, in West Salem. No, Eric the Eric the Red is at a bar called The Last Call on Riverside. Oh, okay, yes. I'm it's sorry. just yeah. it's on this. It's on Salem proper side of territory, um, but it's north of the bridge. Uh, it's over where the kind of. Uh, Tourist barges take off from the river boats that go up and down the Willamette. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the Otis and his crew are on the other side of the bridge. They're in West Salem, uh, but they're north West Salem. They're up in Salem Town. Okay, so yeah, like we have to go through to them. Yeah. To get, I see. All right. Well, I, honestly, I would say let's go with Eric the Red because he has direct proof mm-hmm. of the, the demon. And we can always, uh, or at least, you know, he's involved, I should say. Um, he might have but... more information. Right. Are you two what? Whatever my babysitters would like to do. Demons just sound so thrilling. Uh, mm. yeah. um, Makes my mind. A few lesser ones um, in my studies. But I don't know which one we're dealing with, so... Oh, Best even account. better. A demon you don't know is just as great as a demon you do. Awesome. Well, information is always the best key to right. everything. Just Agreed. seems that we're lacking that key, darling. Yes. Exactly. I'm going to go talk to Eric. So let's go to the Riverside. Where you said last call? Last call? Yeah. All right. Uh, you show up. Not too hard to find. And it looks like it has seen better days. It is currently under construction. 
it looks like it got burnt out more than once. Uh, there's bullet holes along the wall as you enter. Uh, there's police tape. Uh, it looks like it's been cleaned up at least, uh, and it's currently in the process of being rebuilt. And, <clears throat> excuse me, as you come in from behind uh, one of the back hallways that leads to what would be a bathroom, uh, you see this monstrosity come out of no making no noise either, which just frightens you even more. But there's this little kind of human body, uh, this elongated legs that end in claws, these elongated hands that end in long spindly fingers, uh, and then just this kind of bat-like face that barely looks human anymore. Uh, and there's three little cats kind of interweaving themselves amongst his feet. Uh, there's one uh, that's just this big kind of fluffy gray cat, this lean, uh, I want to say it is a almost black cat and then there's the the smallest and what looks to be the kitten of the group is like this tiger striped little furball uh and as he comes out he's holding the kitten in one hand just kind of like hooping his nose with his long finger uh talking to him in what sounds like russian and he sees the three of you he stops and he puts the kitten down very slowly. Yeah, pussy, pussy, pussy. Eric, I presume? And no, this, I am not the Eric. I am, my name is Teddy. What are you looking for? Looking for Wait. Eric, darling. Oh, there is no Eric here. Who is the owner of this bar, then? Oh, uh, that would be my friend Melvin and his friends. Okay. Do you know of Eric the Red? I have heard of him, yes. Do you know if he is around? No, he is not around. to see if he's lying <laughs> i was getting there but yeah. okay yeah uh wits and insight do i get to use my offex with this is this uh let's see mm. No, I don't think this would heighten, this would fall under heightened senses or seeing the unseen. Okay. Uh, well, I get to add it to, um, what is it? Um, well, perception. So if you would. I have three successes if it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing perception more as like looking, okay. hearing, sensing. This is more like. Okay. Trust in your gut or or four successes. Okay. Yeah, the the he given even though he has a grotesque appearance, there's something innocent about him. Uh okay. and, and he looks more frightened of about the fact that there's three of you compared to him, even though he looks like he could kill all three of you within the span of one round. All right. She will. Take on a, a less demeanor, kind of. A soothing demeanor. Mm -hmm. And. Teddy. You know. 
we don't want to hurt anybody. We just need a little information. I don't suppose you could help us out. There is very little that is told to Teddy. Teddy just takes care of his cats and protects the bar from people who would want to burn it down again. Mm. Teddy, who would want to burn down the bar? Again? Oh, so many people burn the bar down when they get a chance. It's... It's bad. There was a werewolf too. Uh, wow. Yeah, and then there's and homeless people. Friends. Yes. Who are these Melvin and friends? What are their names besides Melvin? Uh, it is Melvin. Uh, it is uh, the fancy one. They call him the senator. And there is the biker one who rides the motorcycle. And you see him pull out this beaten up fedora and he puts it on. Melvin gave me this hat. Oh, that's beautiful. That's why me and him are friends. It's also because oh, so we are Nosferatu cute. and we are clanmates. Oh, really? You're clanmates? Interesting. Has Ivory heard of Melvin? Melvin. He's been here a little bit. Yeah, Melvin was the childer of, or is rather, the childer of uh, Mickey Douglas, who was one of the important Nosferatu in the city. And once Mickey, once word got out that Mickey was killed, Melvin just shut down and has become uh, hard to get to. Uh, he was one of the sheriff's go-to men uh but as of recently the sheriff has been creating coteries like yours or asking people to uh make coteries to to kind of deal with things um and melvin has kind of become a periphery uh kind of character recently was melvin a, a scourge a, a scourge no no melvin uh, Melvin was almost made whip for, for, was almost made clan whip, uh, but then okay. Willow was given the, uh, the title. Okay. So he wasn't yeah, like so... the uh, sheriff's thug, he was just like a, a go-to guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. start walking around the bar. Okay. Just aimlessly trying to look to see if I see anything. Yeah, one of the cats just sticks by you. Just follows me? Yep. Start aimlessly petting it. Yeah. And so I asked Teddy if, since uh, if if Eric's not here, do you know where Eric is? We're looking for him because he has information we need. Oh, uh, he uh, could be anywhere. Uh, uh, he said he might. No, a uh, last I heard, he took off with motorcycle guy, uh, and they took Melvin. Uh, and they told me to protect the bar. How long ago was that? Oh, I want to say that's almost like uh, two weeks ago. We got a lot of places. Well, um, maybe you, maybe Eric said something about uh, a demon on the loose in West Salem. Do you ever hear of anything about that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They killed demon. Uh, I saw them across the river. Um, there was a group of people who were trying to take Teddy. And they saved me. Uh, and then they went oh. across to a motel. Uh, and then Melvin lost his clothes. And the biker guy got uh, alligator pants. Alligator bites? Is that... Pants. And he points at his legs. Oh, we got it. Uh, pants. Got it. Pants, yes. All right. And with uh, the alligator pants from the demon? He looks down like it never occurred to him that this that the demon might have given him pants. And then he looks up at you. I guess uh, they made the deal. Sure. Okay. And you said, though, that they, they put the demon down like he's no longer around. Or it's no longer around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They killed it. They killed the dead. Do you know? What did the demon look like? Uh, 
I never asked. But they said it was oh, small. I thought you saw it. I saw them fight something small across the river. Uh, I thought it was a midget, but uh, they said that it was the demon. Right, so it was a, it was a short uh, being? Yeah, and you see him hold out his hand. Uh, and he puts it just underneath the bar height. Okay. It was about this tall. I mean, I guess it was about this tall. I was on the other side of the river, so I can't really be counted on for precise measurements. All right. Uh... Have I left you here to take care of the bar? I say this as I'm starting to like walk around. Yeah. I'm basically trying to look for any like doors that I can get into or anything like that. I mean, any inside the bar that you're at right now, there's nothing really there's a burnt out jukebox uh a husk of what might have been a dartboard and the only reason i say that is because there are charred darts still stuck in it uh there is there are two charred payphones that don't look like they work anymore uh tables that have been tossed around the remnants of what looked to be tent pikes tent anchors uh but you do notice that around each tent anchor, something has been carved into the floor. Some kind of symbol. I look up at Chad and I go, hey, Chad. Um, oh. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Carl, um, something here you might want to take a look at with your infinite wisdom. <laughs> you flatter. <clears throat> All right. I'll go ahead. Ivory will kind of distract Teddy. Oh yeah, yeah. And, yeah. He's he hasn't moved as, from as the from the hallway. Like he is, it looks like he's protecting whatever's behind him. So he's fine, mm. just kind of standing there and talking to you. I'm okay. like, do you mind if I look at the the bar over here? He said it was the bar, right? Yes, yes. That is fine. That is where the hobo put up his tent before. Okay. He, he turned into a werewolf and then scratched a. Oh. Melvin and his friends, uh, but we drove him off because Melvin shot him in the dick. I mean, if you're going to shoot a werewolf, why not? That, that is what I was saying. Uh, all right, so I'll go ahead and look over to the the symbols that were dug in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just normal information first. Uh, Let's see it, it does not look like anything that you are familiar with, so it's going to be a hard... Uh, intelligence and a cultural. All right. I'm keeping my eyes on Eddie. Oh, six, six, seven. Okay. <laughs> trying to see if I get closer or if I get further, if he reacts. Not at all. Like he, he looks like his main priority is to just kind of protect whatever's behind him. And then right after that is just making sure that he is not rude to Ivory as they're talking. Like that is that is the simplicity of his head right now, in his head right now. All right. He's blocking the whole thing. Like I can't. Yeah. See. No, he is massive. <laughs> he is inhuman in his size. Uh, <laughs> and if it wasn't for the fact that he told you he was Nosferatu, you'd probably think this was the demon you were looking for. <laughs> Honestly, that was not far from the first. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I bet. Yikes. Uh, uh, that or a gangrel. That's, you know, it's like a really messed up gangrel. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, the the symbols on the floor don't look like they're anything you've ever dealt with, uh, given the specialization that you've taken in your, in your occultness. Right. Uh, but because of the larger world of darkness that you've been thrust into, you do remember there were notes that one of your colleagues had uh, about a supposed werewolf language. Uh, and these look eerily in the vein of those of the, the ones that he had collected. Okay, cool. There's none uh, that there's none that you really remember uh, that look like, but there is uh one that almost looks like a uh a different version of the swastika 
it looks more more curved and there's double lines as opposed to yeah. the to the single kind of cross shaped gotcha all right um without my notepad you know you know write it down sure uh, yeah, copy, copy the glyphs and also uh sense the unseen see if there's anything like supernatural uh kind of about it uh there is but there's nothing that you were that you've ever been on the on this end of like this is stuff that you might have read about this is stuff that that you might have heard about in passing of somebody being like oh yeah this was a thing or this is a thing um uh, but there is this tendril of almost like an an ethereal vine that is growing up out of the floor in each of the locations of the four symbols. Interesting. Yeah. Almost like it's it's struggling to to reach for sunlight that's never gonna come. So it doesn't look like malignant, it just looks like something different. Yeah, yeah. It looks like something straight out of uh Alice in Wonderland and like the natural order of things. I dare you to touch it. Hmm. Go ahead, touch it. Ouch. Is, Good idea. is this the kind of thing I could even touch if I wanted to? No, no, it's spectral. It's it's it's, it's spectral. All like, right. Like if you reach your hand out and and wave it in front of it, it goes through it. Makes sense. All right. Oh. I'm against Ivory, and I go. So Teddy, what you got back there, sweetheart? It looks like it's kind of interesting. Oh, that is just the offices. It's is where Teddy sleeps during the day. Uh, but this is where the last the homeless people were uh, keeping their tents in. So it was a little bit of a give and take situation. Uh, I let them stay here and then I took some of their blood while they slept. That sounds like a wonderful arrangement. Oh, it was very nice for me, yes. I didn't have to kill anymore. Are they back there now, or did they already leave? Uh, there is one left. Uh, he calls himself Chuck. He plays a harmonica really well. Well, I would love to hear that if you'd come out and play for us. Oh, come on. And he turns around and starts walking down the, the hallway. Yeah. And back here, there is again just this charred out hallway, uh, what looks to have been a men's and women's room, uh, a office door uh, or a door marked office uh, that just has a stairway going down, uh, and then an actual office that isn't marked. Uh, that looks to have the broken uh, and charred remains of a bookshelf, like one of those metallic bookshelves where they would hold liquor. Uh, you can yeah. see the remnants of burnt out uh, kegs on the, the bottom shelves. Uh, a turned over desk that is currently being used as a seat. And you can see an older gentleman kind of sitting there writing in a book, excuse me. Uh, and to one side, you can see uh, a set of all cabinets that have been burnt out. Uh, some of them are open, some of them are closed. But at top of them, you can also see what looks to have been some kind of case where something small was kept. Um, but all, all five. Uh, what's it called? Uh, sides of the glass uh, were were visible at some point before they got charred in the fire, uh, because this was something that was supposed to be openly portrayed and and viewable by people. Teddy, what used to be there? And I point to the place. Oh, that is the biker man's gun. Gotcha. All right. Interesting. I think it was has it a case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was kept 
there because it was special. I think it was from the Wild West, and there were silver bullets with it. Silver? Yeah. And who took those bullets and that gun? Oh, the, the biker man took them. It's his gun. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Is he the one that ran off the werewolf? Yeah. Yep. Shot them in the dick. I bet it was a big dick. Uh, Teddy wasn't there to see it, but... Um, it is not something that he thought about until right now. <laughs> I have that. I have that magic power. So where's this lovely harmonica playing, gentlemen? And he points uh, to the guy sitting on the desk. Chuck is right there. Say hello, Chuck. And kind of holds up his hand. Chuck hello, Chuck. He, uh, he starts to sign. Ah. Like, and, he, and Teddy looks at him. This is what he does. He doesn't talk. But he understands. Thank you so much for gathering information. <laughs> okay, nobody knows sign. No. No. <laughs> but but Teddy just starts to clap his hands and he's like, show him a tune, Chuck. And takes in a deep breath and he starts to play a bluesy jazz, a bluesy little little ditty. It's it sounds sad, but Teddy has a big smile on his face and he's just clapping and stomping his foot to a rhythm that doesn't match. Is it actually good? His rhythm is not good, but the 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 harmonica player no, is mean... really good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. She files that away. <laughs> yeah. And it, when he when he finishes, he kind of takes off his hat as a sign of uh, thanks, and Teddy comes over and picks up his little uh, tip cup, and he kind of shakes it at the three of you. You've got to remember that he's homeless, so anything that you have in your pockets would be nice for him. I agree. We'll definitely throw in some bills. Okay. Yeah, I'll throw in a uh, He doesn't have any bills. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Throw in a couple ones. I don't know. If, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, whatever spare change I got. Okay. And yeah, you see him bring his hand up to his chin uh, as a sign of thanks. He looks moved by it and then kind of puts his hand on Teddy's shoulder, signs something, and then kind of puts his head against his arm and then takes his cup, his hat, and his harmonica and starts to walk out. Okay, so I guess we're going to be heading to our next location then. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Teddy, I was going to ask, what do you know if, what, if anything they did with the demon after they killed it? Oh, the demon I heard uh, disappeared into a vortex of hell. Okay. Huh. No body or anything. Not that I saw, but... Uh, Melvin and his friends might know more than I do. Right. Where is Melvin right now? Right now. Uh, probably with his friends. And you said they could be anywhere, though, right now. They could be anywhere, yeah. I think we can test that and see if he's lying or not. <laughs> if you want to know, but... You know what direction they want to. I think he's so far, but I he is, uh, Yeah, he is... I will give you for free that he is not lying to you. Okay. They did not call him to tell them... <laughs> to tell him where they went. Okay. Oh. Protect the bar. We're off. Did they leave anything behind that might help us if we needed to find them? Phone number or a map? Uh, no. This room used to be theirs. You said this used to be their bar. Yeah, yeah. And he starts to walk out back into the, the main part of the bar. Uh, and he goes over to the wall with the two dartboards and the two payphones. He's like... There is, uh, yeah, this is this is where uh, the senator would stay whenever he, he had to. And he, you see him kind of pulling on some things, and suddenly there's a clicking noise, and the wall 
pushes forward and he pulls it open to reveal a safe room. Uncharred, clean. I think I found something. <laughs> and there's just boxes <laughs> with file marvelous. folders. I start to rummage through just to try to look for anything like that's note wise. Hopes that you have a clue on where they went. And I explain this to Teddy as I go along. I just, darling, I just want to know where they went. We need to contact them. Nothing important. Don't worry. Oh, no, there, there is nothing important in the boxes. Uh, <sighs> Melvin told me they're just there for, you know, safekeeping. Mm. Sure. Hey, darling, um, is there anything that could help us? Anything at all? With a demon? Is there a desk? Is there a desk in there? There isn't. There's two cots, uh, two cots. Okay. and there's a safe. You all want to try to crack the safe? It's about waist high, uh, and maybe four feet wide, and about foot deep. No one at all. Uh. I like gesture to the oh. safe. I don't think I want to break into somebody's that we don't know nothing about yet. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we've already probably gone a little farther than I wanted to inside here. Um, just because, you know, he let us in. I'm okay with it. But uh, I think when we break, start breaking into safes, we start trespassing on their territory. And let's not piss off people we don't need to quite yet. Um, that's fine. I think uh, unless... Teddy, do you have anything else that we could? Because we're just looking for info on the on the demon and where Melvin and his buddies might be, so we could ask them. But you said you don't know, right? I don't know where they are, but I know that they said that this was the second demon that they faced because uh, there was a Tremere that they killed who had been summoning demons into the city. Do you know the name of the Tremere? No, he's dead anyway, so I wouldn't help. Yeah, it might have been a source that I could have reached out to. But all right. Um, hmm. All right, well, thank you very much, Teddy. We appreciate yeah. your, your time. You've been, <clears throat> you've been so How helpful. How hard would it be to break into the safe? Uh, if you're trying to crack it, it would be... Just trying to see if I can open it. It would be a, a, a long, extended amount of rolling to try to hear the tumblers Uh, but as you walk out, Teddy closes the safe room and he goes, Oh, uh, please do not be saying anything to the prince about Teddy because I have not been introduced to, to the city. So they don't know that I'm here. I am only here to protect the bar. No Bro. problem, Teddy. Okay. No, no, don't worry, darling. We're just, like I said, here to get their information. Okay. I guess we're going on to our next stop then? Yeah, I guess the, the day's end would be the next best place. Oh, lovely. Okay, bye. Oh, and you see him start to collect his cats. He just sits down in the middle of the floor. Bye, Teddy. See you around. Okay, I'll be seeing you. Thank you, Teddy. Yep. Ominous. <laughs> Very ominous. I still think we should have broken into the safe. Just... I'm not saying they're, 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 it's not a, an impulse, but... <laughs> Let's try and not make enemies right now. Because <laughs> right. I'm mean, not even anything in there. Are well, my babysitters? It's a risk. It's a risk benefit analysis right now. Really, we are only. We weren't even here to see them. We were here to see Eric, and he's not part of it. So we're going off on tangents now. <laughs> well, apparently he's with. The, that's why we got from Teddy, right? He's Maybe? with with a group of <laughs> yeah. gangbusters over there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they're not here. That's fine. Um, and they have no idea where he is. And there ain't no cell phones now, so it's really hard to find anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think this would be enough information for um our our bartender? I mean it's not really proof. We just yes, got he said he I don't know if there will be proof because if he disappeared into a void Right. That's what true. kind of proof is there going to be? Yeah, we would just. I mean, we can it. always a little make believe. True, but again, 
try not to make uh, enemies without cause. Because if we try to lie and we fail, like he's more perceptive than than we are. He need he has information that we need. I know, I know. So it seems well, let's to me try that to... the benefit weighs the negative. Just a little bit. Well, well, it's that's lying right now should be a last resort because again, no need to make enemies unless we have to. Because if we can't trust our word. Um, we're not going to be able to use them as a resource later. You're no fun, darling. I'm going to have to turn you around a couple times just to make sure you're definitely not viewing anything I'm doing. <laughs> no, it's fine. I you understand. You need you. a lot of plausible not... deniability, don't you, darling? Just a little. A little, but not overly much. It's just I don't think we need to do it overtly at this point. You know what I'm saying? So when we... When it's necessary, I have zero problem with it. It's just at the moment, I think we haven't run all all the ev avenues of evidence down because I'd at least like to go to see where the battle site was, and maybe we could pick up something via uh, my talents. Perhaps. And of course, you're taking the charge on this lovely excursion. My car, I guess. Right. So, I guess so. Men, they always have a tendency to. And she mumbles as she walks off. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You're more than welcome to drive if you want. You can drive? If you want. Let me see. I have zero in driving. Yeah. But yeah. Sure. You don't need it. <laughs> <That's another question. laughs> don't. Note to self. But hey, let's try it. That much. Car crashes are not exactly lethal to come This is true. Yeah, if I remember correctly, Will, you don't actually need drive to be able to drive. That's to be specialty driving, right? Yeah, that's just to, to do special tricks and things like that. I yeah. just assumed that you knew where the gear shift was. Yeah, he's got, yeah, he's figured, got an automatic car. Yeah, I've got an automatic car. Like, I figure drive one is like, yeah, you know how to do stick shift or yeah. whatever. So yeah. well, that's what, then it would be more common to have a stick shift, wouldn't it? Yeah, in the 80s, it would probably be about equally as common, I imagine. Yeah. I figured you had like a little stick shift, one of those beep beep. Yeah. <laughs> I figured it's like a uh, I don't know, whatever, a Camry. Just on the board. There you go. <sighs> uh, oh. All right. So we'll do it your way. And off we go. All right. Yep. You go across the river um, into West Salem. There's no big kind of sign or overarching um, symbols, um, symbolism to show you that you're in a barony. It looks like it's just another part of the city. Um, and as you drive up following the river, um, you do get to a day's in um, all the way at the end of the rooms. There is one that has police tape on it. Uh, it has a corner window that looks out into the parking lot, but also out towards the river. Uh, and there's maybe 50 or 60 yards between the end of the parking lot and the edge of the river. But you can see that there's leftover markings, uh, chalk circles where police uh, picked up evidence. Excuse me. Yeah. There's no signs of any like brimstone and sulfur demons. There's no remnant of a void to hell having been opened. Didn't think it would be just hanging out. Yeah, you know, lounging on by the pool. Right. <laughs> Ivory is definitely keeping an eye out and using Looking her right. senses just in case okay. to watch out for anybody approaching. Sure. Also looking for any unusual markings, like the one we found at the bar. Okay. Um, and I guess, yeah, just look around, see. Uh, they said, the, was the battle outside the, the hotel or in the in this room, did we say? Uh, did he, say? he said that he could see them, so it couldn't have been in the room. The outside, right. All right, so yeah, I'll go scout around the outside, see for what we can see. Um via the sense the unseen thing see if anything supernatural triggers i guess okay uh there is a 
dark patch uh, that kind of pops up to you by where a car looks have been parked. Uh, you can see almost like a puddle is bubbling back up to the surface from underground. Uh, as you use since the unseen, you can see what looks to be uh, dried spatters of blood that now kind of become very vibrantly red to you. Okay. Uh, but then you also see that there are patches of the grass that look to be padded down um, that all kind of stand out to you for a moment. And if you follow them, you'll see a, uh, a very conical spatter of green blood uh, kind of stretched out like if something had been shot from behind or uh, if something had been shot, period, and this is the exit wounds damage uh, to the creature. But it's a low spatter, so it does kind of fit Teddy's description of a small creature, of a little person styled monstrosity. Um, and the blood does smell a little bit of sulfur. And there is a little bit of brimstone that just hits the back of your throat now. Mm. Mm. Well, this is oh, enough hey. evidence. Yeah, go ahead and collect, uh, pull out a vial out of one of my inner pockets of my lab coat. Uh, <laughs> Convenient. Collect. Yeah. That's why we carry around lab coats. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, for uh, the vials. For the vials. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, pull, you know, collect some of the samples, collect some of the soil stuff too. Uh, and that um, more blackened area, you said? Yep. Um, for further study, like enough to get, like, you know, some for me, some for Marcus. Oh, so you want to keep some of this? Of course. <laughs> okay. See, Maybe. someone has a fetish. It's called curiosity. <laughs> that Go is on. the fetish of the Tremere. That is, that is what we call it. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, you know, one for me, one for thee, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yep. And then I think we we got, and I don't think we should overstay our welcome. Um, but kind of take a note of that bubbly thing, you know, like really mark it in my mind. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for further research later. Sure. Um, that bubbly thing, we can't see it. He can, right? He, he's the only one that can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do have sense the unseen, but mm -hmm. I don't know that it was. Would you would you be activating it for this? Um, well, I did say she was looking around for things mm -hmm. and people, so maybe I don't know. Okay. I mean, if she notices that he actually sees something, yeah. then yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once you see him kind of stop and and bend over or squat down at something, mm -hmm. uh, you activate your sense the unseen and you see the same things that he does. That you can see the the, the bubbling up of the water. Um, you can see the the kind of uh, dried blood becoming more vibrant and visible to you. But where he kind of deviated to follow the grass, your attention is brought to what looks to be an ovular shape in the ground um, that looks almost like if you had taken uh, a shirt, a pair of jeans, a long coat, and just taking it from solid to gas to liquid in a matter of milliseconds, just kind of spattered there. Uh, and you also pick up that there's a couple of droplets a little small kind of controlled spatter of blood that stands out vibrantly now over by the door to the last room on the first floor you gonna tell us anything or just yeah give me a second <laughs> um digest it digest it um you might want to check over here also 
Uh, I will get. I will be right there. Uh, not only do I, I wanted to collect the, the the green blood stuff, obviously. Yeah. But the 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 you said there was some normal dry blood too. Grab some of that for later testing. No. Um. Okay. Go to what Ivory had showed. It says. Yeah, you see there the same seems thing. There to be some on the door frame. Not on the door okay. itself, but the 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 floor by the door. It almost looks like. Ah. Somebody was fed off of right here. Okay. Take a sample of that. Okay. Um, and it looks like the, oh well, I can just test it with blood sorcery. Um, the door open or closed? If it's, uh, if it's human or kindred. The door is closed, uh, but there is police tape. So, uh, the blood is human. Okay. But it's unlike any human you've tasted before. There's something okay. there's something weird about this blood. Very interesting. All right, we're into all kinds of weird things today. That's awesome. Um, I reach over the police tape and kind of just like open the door. Y'all see anything in there? Yeah, it, step it, back. It clicks open, uh, and as you as it kind of freaks. Slowly to a full ajar position. The room is dark. Uh, you can see that there are more chalk circles from where more evidence was picked up. Uh, but as the door clicks against the door stopper on the wall, you hear something fall in the bathroom. Oh, lovely. Heightened senses. <laughs> yeah. I wish for you. She I'm gonna see take anything in the dark. Or hear anything moving? In the, in yeah. the darkness, I there is nothing moving that you can see, but you do okay. hear sharp little <sighs> in and out takes of breath. I'm going to take this opportunity to rouse so that I can go kind of like just inside, but more so into the shadows not to be seen. Okay. So as I step inside, I would like to rouse. All right. So you've got to step back so that nobody's looking at you uh, and go ahead and roll your one die. At a zero. Okay. Um, so as soon as you kind of take a step back, you look around to make sure that nobody's looking at you, and you just instinctively pull on the magic of the blood that's now forcing through you, and you pull all the shadows. You pull from the shadows that uh, Arl and Ivory are casting. You pull from the shadows from inside the room itself, and you just cover yourself, and you kind of nudge around Carl and Ivory and make your way into the room itself. To Carl and Ivory, you can hear uh, kind of like the soft sound of something kind of rubbing against the door frame. Uh, and in your periphery, you no longer see uh, Kathleen. Um, and as the sense of the unseen sense the unseen um, yeah. like i don't know if you're active or not on that so i don't know from what oh. seems to that yeah so as soon as she crosses into your field of vision you can see the outline of her okay yeah i don't know if it if it was still active kind of thing because i know we switched yeah, yeah. yeah positions uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'm hoping you all can see me because if we're about to get into a battle, I want to make sure you guys are yeah. way up on the flanks. As long as your auspex is equal to or higher than the obfuscate that's being used, you can see them. At least an outline of them. Yeah, I didn't um, know if it was a direct, a direct correlation or not. So like, uh, you only have auspex one, Carl, so right. you only get to see like the the predator effect. Like You can see that the shadows bend where her outline is. Okay. Uh, sure. But Ivory actually does see the full outline of what she's doing, how she's moving, where she is, um, okay. where the clothes ends and the skin begins, things like that. Okay. Uh, and it's a little creepy 
given that she's wearing a mask because you see the outline of the holes and then you see the actual outline of her eyeballs behind the holes if she looks in your direction wink at her <laughs> no but on a serious note i yep. start to make my way towards like the back of the place where we heard that um something dropping yeah and you see as you make your way to the back of the room and into the kind of toiletry area the toilet and and bathtub are separated by a doorway and standing on the to on the toilet's lid holding uh what looks to be a towel rack that fell uh and just clutching it to his little chest is a straight out of dungeons and dragons imp just maybe three feet tall three feet four inches tall thin wiry little limbs these little talon tipped fingers and and um claws for feet uh the kind of scorpion tail that comes around and wraps into his chest and then the little bat like wings that come from uh just above where the waist is and stretch out and are just pressed up against the wall behind him he is trying to press himself as far into the wall as possible and as you see him he sees you and this is where we're going to end tonight's episode that's what we're going to do awesome <laughs> so uh, i'd like to thank all of you for joining me i'd like to thank the audience for sticking out with us uh, as we return to a Camarilla chapter of our dual storyline of Salem by Night. Uh, and now I'd like to give each of you, before we close out, a little moment to kind of uh, talk about yourselves and kind of give me a where you hope the story takes you. And uh, we'll go in reverse order this time, so we'll go with, uh, with Kathleen. Oh, the reveal! The reveal! You're no you're more muted. human. Oh, and you're oh, muted. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm not. I'm here. <laughs> Picture the mic. thing has a little here. Um. So one of the things that I hope for Kathleen is that she grows as a vampire. She's very impulsive now, which is like what I want to see from her as a new vampire. She's still living that. Uh, mortal life of basically living on the edge and to be able to uh, capture an essence that she can't have for herself mm. and she wants to do things differently now that she's uh, been you know kindred and one of the things she's doing is she's being a lot more outgoing and a lot more uh, obtuse with her words and her actions she's not afraid of of having people stare at her any more than she is than she was before she is trying to capture something she couldn't have in life which for her is something really big um and that's basically what i want to see for her i want to see her grow as as this type of creature mm. i want to see how she can lose control and what that would look like for somebody who's been holding it in for so long um and i want to play that out so i'm actually really excited i'm excited where the story's going i'm excited that i got to see an imp okay very awesome <laughs> <laughs> Carl? Well, I too am excited to see the imp uh, and all that that <laughs> might entail for uh, Carl and the group. Because um, uh, if there's still a terrestrial demon kind of hanging around, mm, that opens up possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, as far as where I would like to see the story go, I'm very interested in figuring out what the, uh, right now what the Kuei is is doing. Um, because uh, they're the unknown. And Carl's very much about the unknown and pushing the edges of his knowledge as far as he can go. Um, like, obviously, he's, like I was saying earlier, he's very into flight um, and such, but that's not the only area of knowledge he has. He's, you know, just very interested in see how things work. And if there's, he's barely, you know, even after the few decades he's been a, a kindred, he's very, uh, there's still so much to learn, obviously. Like, just tonight, I ran into, like, what, three things that I've never even seen before? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so 
that kind of stuff is definitely where he's he's aiming to always learn more and interact and find new things and uh you know i hope to see some interaction with uh the other groups yeah um, and this team yeah, episodes whatever. happen yep all right and uh and now ivory ivory you're also a streamer so go ahead and plug your channel uh it's uh lock gen one uh l-o-c-k-g-e-n one um I, I just started so there's not a lot there but i i play um final fantasy mostly okay <laughs> um, I finally get to do this in real life. Woo! <laughs> um, and and I just got my island, and it's awesome. Anyway, so nice. um, Ivory. So Ivory is very detached from everything, and I want her to get more involved. Be she has pulled herself away when she um, was changed a few decades ago. Um, it was a very traumatic time. And so she basically just detached and just became all business. So I really would like to see her be pulled into more emotional things and see what it does to her. I think that would be a lot of fun. Emotional um, damage. <laughs> love it <laughs> my favorite <laughs> stuff Massively PTSD somehow so right um and unfortunately i won't be here next in two weeks oh no Bye. yeah yeah life life uh, yeah life that's fine. so i won't get to do the imp <laughs> Oh, uh, you know the, the group needs a lookout, so that's what we'll that's what we'll keep you doing. That's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll see if anything. I'll I'll keep you abreast if anything happens to you outside while they're dealing with the supernatural stuff inside. <clears throat> Alright, I won't let nothing happen to you. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> you girls gotta yeah. stick together. No killing off screen. No, anyway. no. Oh, none yeah. whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for being part of this. I hope that uh, we're going to have a lot of fun together. Uh, I'm liking what we've seen of everybody. Uh, and as we play, we'll get to see uh, where our natural idiosyncrasies start to kind of sync up so that we're uh, kind of building off of each other uh, and not stepping on each other's toes. Um, it's a growing process. Uh, but as always, I want to thank our viewers for watching us and sticking out with us. Uh, as always, um, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We take mental health on the channel very seriously. Um, if you're watching uh, and you feel like you need help, there are phone numbers going up on Twitch chat right now if you're watching live. Uh, they'll be in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, if you're not in the United States, there's a link to help you find the resources that you need in the in the places that you're living. Um, and if you are a friend or family member of somebody that is usually a strong or happy-go-lucky personality, please check in on them. You never know how far a simple hello or how are you uh, can change the trajectory of somebody's life. Uh, so please, please, please uh, look after yourselves, look after each other. Uh, if you haven't gotten um, your vaccines, please get your vaccines because now there is a monkeypox uh, rampant in the world. And that's just two words that I never thought I was going to get to say together. Uh, so please take care of yourselves health wise, mental wise, uh, psychologically. Uh, it's all the umbrella of health. So please look after yourselves, look after each other. And we will see you when we see you. Uh, it's been a joy. I can't wait to see where we go from here. Uh, and we will see you next week with our Anarch chapter. Uh, tomorrow is our Legend of the Five Rings story that's coming back. This Friday is another off day. Uh, so you won't see anything on Friday. Uh, but there are things coming up. Uh, I have uh, a couple of projects that I've tossed at McStabber Studios. Uh, I've tossed a project over at 3B Radio. Uh, so you'll see me around. Uh, but as always, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have a good night. And we'll see you when we see you.